It's 5.30. This is WKYT This Morning. People on Eastern Kentucky University's campus can expect some traffic troubles this morning. A damaged pedway still has a busy road closed. We have some more information about when that is likely to reopen. Also this morning, two people charged in connection to a Lexington murder are to be heading to court today for the first time. We're looking ahead to the charges they're now facing. And one Kentucky woman is making her TV debut on the Food Network. We'll find out what show she'll be on ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It is so good to have you on WKYT as we get this Monday off and rolling, and we hope you enjoyed your weekend. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Andrea Walker. It is Monday, September 12th, and good grief, that weather yesterday was just <laughs> well, perfect. I mean, beautiful, tranquil skies. It and was. The humidity levels were down. That's good. Nice this morning, a little on the chilly side, mm -hmm. but Micah says things will warm up as we head into Monday. Let's check in with him ahead of the news. Yeah, and it does look pretty good as we walk outside. I don't see any issues. Issues whatsoever as you're stepping out the door. Kids going off to the bus stop. No problems. No roadway issues. What we're hearing early this morning. 54 degrees now in Montgomery County. Go off into Winchester, my friends there. Clark County, good morning to you guys. Richmond, Waco, Berea, all looks well in Madison County. Coming in at 55 degrees right now in Laurel County. Now we get off towards your afternoon. 78 degrees there by noontime. Now a lot of us actually finished off at 78 degrees yesterday with mostly sunny skies. We'll add about four to five degrees on top of that for today. It is getting warmer, but I will tell you this, humidity still way down, so it actually feel really nice later on this afternoon, but you know that doesn't last too long. I'm gonna show you when we start to peak those temperatures, and not only that, when the rain chances slide on in here in your seven day in just a few minutes. And we'll see you shortly. Let's get to the news. Two people charged in connection to a shooting in Lexington will head to court this morning. Right, Daniel Glasscock and Destiny Hunt are both charged with murder and robbery. WKYT's Lauren Miner is live in Lexington outside the courthouse and looking ahead at their day in court. Lauren? Good morning, Bill and Andrea. Well, this is the second arrest made in the shooting. Police arrested 28 year old Daniel Glasscock on Saturday for murder and robbery. On Friday, police arrested 22 year old Destiny Huff of Nicholasville. She has also been charged with murder and robbery. Investigators determined that Huff and Glasscock were involved in a drug deal with the victim, Victor Villagomez Duarte, when the victim was shot Labor Day morning right outside the Microtel Inn off Winchester Road near the interstate. He had a gunshot. Shot wound to his right shoulder and was taken to UK hospital for treatment. On Wednesday morning, he was pronounced dead. Both Huff and Glasscock will imp will appear in district court today. Police have not identified any other suspects at this time, but that's not to say they aren't there aren't any more. Reporting live in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Lauren, thank you. And friends of a man whose body police found in the back of a burned car held a vigil to remember the friend. Police found Trevor Dilger's body on a road just off Old Frankfurt Pike a week ago. Dilger's friends knew him as Dilly. They spent their Sunday night at Triangle Park in Lexington to remember their buddy. The idea for the vigil started out on a Facebook post. It got a lot of shares then, and friends say they're glad that so many people showed up and showed their support. This to me is everything. This is what I think that we need more of, people coming together and speaking to one another and just being there for one another. The coroner still has not released Ilger's cause of death. So far, police have not made any arrests in connection to the case. Georgetown police are investigating a chase that ended with a crash. Police say a man fired four to five shots near the colony subdivision. When they pulled up, they say the man took off and hit two cars. Officers lost him at the intersection of U.S. 25 and Cherry Blossom Way. He later crashed on Della Plain and Anderson Road. We're told the car caught fire. And deputies in Russell County are investigating a deadly crash that killed a child. The sheriff's office says Jessica Warner was crossing Kentucky 379 at French Valley Road over the weekend when she pulled in front of a truck. We're told the truck hit the side of her car. Emergency crews rushed Warner and her three year old daughter, Chloe Fortenberry, to hospitals in Nashville. We're told Chloe died. Warner's injuries were not life threatening. 
534 now on WKYT this morning. And Kentucky State Police are investigating a robbery at a Madison County gas station. Troopers say an armed man walked into the BP on Simpson Lane last night. They say the man demanded the clerk open up the cash register, and then he did get away with some money. State Police have released this surveillance photo this morning. Troopers say he was wearing a bandana over his face and had on a blue long sleeved shirt as well as khaki pants and a hat labeled American Sniper. In Whitley County, two teenagers who died on train tracks will be laid to rest this week. State police say Cody Stevens and Jordan Carr were lying on the tracks near Highway 26 in Rockholds when a train hit them. Carr's funeral is later this morning at 11 o'clock at the Crowley Funeral Home in Williamsburg, and Stevens' funeral services are set for Wednesday. Investigators in Western Kentucky are looking for a second inmate who walked away from work release. The Barron County Jailer says Amber Franks walked away from her work release crew on Tuesday. Friday, state police say Daryl Taylor walked away from work detail in Bowling Green. Police in South Carolina found Franks and her boyfriend last week. Taylor is still on the run. He was last seen at Basil Griffin Park in Bowling Green on Friday. Kentucky is not ready yet to comply with a federal law changing the state's licenses. The Real ID law requires a special driver's license to board domestic flights. Kentucky has applied for three one year waivers, allowing them to avoid enforcement of the law. And a Louisville TV station reports state leaders are asking the government for more time to prepare. The current extension is set to expire October 10th. Now, unless Kentucky upgrades its driver's licenses by January 2018, current licenses will not be valid. A passport or other form of ID will be needed. Kentuckians paid their respects to those who lost their lives on 9-11. ROTC students at the University of Kentucky placed 2,977 flags on campus for each person killed in the terrorist attacks. A mother and her children were at the ceremony listening to the names read off of the list. That mother got a question that was not easy to answer. They announced a couple different women and they would say the woman's name and then her unborn child. And uh, my son said, Mommy, why would somebody be so mean to kill somebody who was pregnant? That mother says it was important to help kids understand what happened on September 11, 2001. She tells us her children were not alive when the tragedy happened, but they'll be able to learn from history. An iconic 9-11 flag that disappeared shortly after the terror attacks has a surprising Kentucky connection. The flag came from a yacht docked near the World Trade Center. Lexington developer Dudley Webb once owned that yacht. And he says he bought the flag at a marina in Jamestown. The flag eventually showed up in Washington in 2014. It now sits inside the National September 11th Museum. You can track the flag's journey right now on WKYT.com. Well, this Sunday wasn't just a time for football, but 15 years to the day of the September 11th attacks. It was also a day that was full of patriotism and some protests. Hannah Daniels has the story. I was so proud. In a show of solidarity and tribute to victims of the September 11th terror attacks, the Seattle Seahawks stood and linked arms during the national anthem before their season opener against the Miami Dolphins. We want to honor those lives that have been lost 15 years ago on this tragic day um, and also honor those who have sacrificed their lives for the freedom that we cherish. We want to ensure that freedom and the security of justice for all people. During the same game, four Miami Dolphins kneeled on the sideline with hands on their hearts as the Star Spangled Banner played. Their coach talked after the game. You know, it's their opinion. It's their right. And, you know, my job is to coach the football team. A number of athletes have followed the lead of 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick, who has chosen to sit out the national anthem in order to bring attention to racial inequality. On Sunday, the Kansas City Star reported that team cornerback Marcus Peters raised a black gloved fist during the song. And before the game against the Arizona Cardinals, two New England Patriots raised their right fists after the anthem was played. One show of patriotism by New York Giants Odell Beckham and Victor Cruz could have them paying up. The two players could face fines by the NFL for wearing unsanctioned footwear as they played in commemorative cleats showing the American flag and a tribute to the FDNY. Henna Daniels, CBS News. And the NFL could fine the players $6,000 for wearing the patriotic cleats. Police unions around the country have vowed to pay the fines if, in fact, they are enforced. 
Well, one stay-at-home mom from Kentucky is getting the chance of a lifetime. <laughs> she is. Samantha Brown is going to star in a Food Network show. The show, though, isn't exactly one that you want to be a part of. <laughs> Brown is from Louisville and will make her big TV debut on the new show called Worst Bakers in America. It's a spinoff of the show Worst Cooks in America. Because I burn everything I bake. So we applied, and next thing you know, I got a call, and I was going to New York. Brown can't say how she fared in the competition, but she does say that her baking improved. She'll be appearing on the show in October. Of course, we wish her the best or worst of luck, you know, whichever, whichever fits and works out for her. <laughs> I could probably give her a run for her money. <laughs> oh, <you think laughs> I'll tell so? you that right now, yes. <laughs> you talk about that a lot. <laughs> I know. I can't cook to save my life. Microwavable dinners is about as good as I can do. Well, I understand. All right, 540 the time, 20 before 6. It's going to take weeks to repair that damaged pedway at EKU on the campus there that is causing a big traffic mess. This morning is the first real test for drivers as the busy road at the middle of Richmond remains closed. WKYT's Mike Byer is there live with a traffic alert. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Andrea. I'm standing near the spot where a dump truck crashed into the EKU pedway causing a big problem for drivers and is expected to cause even a bigger problem this morning. Now, the crash happened Friday just before noon, so this morning will be the first time Lancaster Avenue is closed during a morning rush hour on a weekday. The university is asking drivers to avoid this portion of the road between Eastern Bypass and Crab Street. However, if you have to travel this way, there are detour signs to help you get around the affected area. Officials say this is the first time they've had a crash like this. They say the pedway has to be demolished. Now, due to the accident, this portion of Lancaster Avenue is expected to be closed for at least the next week. Live in Richmond, Mike Byer, WKYT. Yeah, they are saying uh, several weeks on the closure of the street and then uh, months to repair or replace it or whatever the, the plan is. And it yeah. hasn't been there long. I mean, even when I was yeah. in school, they were still in the process right. of building it. So it's, you know, it's upsetting that <laughs> well, it's already I know, been. And it was so nice with the, the nice so uh, signage and so forth. But uh, we'll see what. what uh, Rebuild they do and move on. 541, our time now is so let's check live drive traffic this Monday morning and see what's going on out there. Here's a look at the region, and it is good. We have no reports of any delays or problems uh, throughout the area. On the interstates or the major highways. Now, here's a look at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government's live drive cam at New Circle and North Broadway. Things seem to be moving pretty nicely this morning. A good way to start your week on this Monday, September 12th. All right, so there you go. We already know about those issues over in Richmond. I know. So that, that will be the, uh, the thing that we'll be watching Our throughout are the with day you. to see how that goes. It's going to be tough. It's about 17,000 students at EKU and a city of 35,000. 542 now. Coming up, much more news on your Monday morning. Morning. Well, you don't need to train hard for this marathon. Just show up hungry and ready to eat plenty of pizza. That's my kind of marathon. We'll take a closer look at Argentina's pizza marathon after Micah's forecast. I was about to say, that's my kind of marathon, too. Sunny skies were sitting there toward the afternoon. Very nice temperatures this morning. Actually feels quite nice this afternoon, too. But when does the rain move on in? I'm going to show you that in your seven day coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Well, if you've been getting up and about to head out and about on the roadways, I'll tell you this I haven't heard of any issues, so things look pretty good. Frankfurt, I'm not seeing any problems whatsoever. Going toward Louisville, up toward Florence, back toward Moorhead across 64, all looks well. Bowling Green, uh, not too bad across 65 if you're heading, having to head that direction. Lexington, Looks just fine here in Fayette County, too. Right now, temperature wise, we are in the 50s. It actually feels really nice. In some spots, a little bit chilly. 52 now in Danville. Could we reach 48, 49 degrees before it's all said and done? Well, the one thing we have to do, because temperatures don't go past dew points, we have to drop that dew point. Right now, they're in the lower 50s. So, this is the lowest we can go right now in Danville because the dew points measure moisture in the air. Is right there around 52. I don't see many of us actually reaching upper 40s. Nonetheless, we're talking about lower 50s. And when you have moisture like that, what it does is overnight it allows you to drop pretty rapidly. During the day, it rises rapidly, but that doesn't mean it feels bad toward the afternoon. Bus stop forecast for the kiddos heading off to the bus. I see no problems. Like I said, it is slightly cool once you step out the door. You're going to feel that brisk morning in the air. Promise you that. At least we're not dealing with any. A rain in the forecast, though. We travel towards your noontime hours. Teachers know this. Get the kiddos outside today. If you can have them outside all day long, do it. It's 78 degrees there by noontime and low humidity. Promise it will feel amazing once we get toward noon. Afternoon, a little bit warmer than yesterday, four to five degrees higher. 
than yesterday afternoon, and, and, but it's still low humidity, and that's really the key during the summer months. Remember, we're not to fall just yet. That actually comes later on this month. But it's coming, and you can absolutely feel it in the air. Check out these pictures that were sent to me over Twitter uh, over the weekend. Check out that shot. How great is that shot right there? Now, that's during Friday night football, Jackson County game from Pendleton County. That's from Tasha Ridnour. That is on Twitter, Micah Harris WX. Awesome, awesome shot right there. As always, I love the show. I'm off seven day forecast. Here is your breakdown next few days. Temperatures slowly rise, and that's what we're going to be dealing with the next few days. But I will tell you this at least we stay mostly dry. The week, the work week, actually looks mainly dry. There are no problems during the work week. Like I said, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you could have that small chance at a pop up shower or thunderstorm, but for the most part, we're staying mainly dry all the way through the work week. Sprinklers might need to get going because we did have some rain Saturday, but that's really the only rain we've had in a, in a while. I mean, it's, it was almost three weeks since we've had really good rain here in Lexington, at least in my backyard. And uh, we finally got that on Saturday. Saturday, okay. people got It was getting a little crunchy yeah. at our house, hey, too. Well, yeah. yeah. yeah well, at least the weather's removed as a problem on Monday, right? That's right. good. It's really All right. Nice. Love we'll it. We'll enjoy this day. 548 on WKYT this morning. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is my kind of marathon. In Argentina, pizza enthusiasts gathered together for a walking and eating race through some of the city's best pizza places. It. Sounds rigorous, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Nearly 600 pizza lovers, some with pizza-shaped hats and wigs, took part if they, in this a big pizza marathon. Each racer has to eat one slice of pizza, pizza in each of the eight restaurants who participate in the marathon. If being in the race doesn't show how much you love pizza, you could also be voted the 2016 King of Pizzas. <laughs> Don't know exactly who walked away with that uh, illustrious title. Could have been Micah. Could have been you, Micah. <laughs> could have been. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually kind of be rough yeah. eating pizza and walking. I'd get. Did I hear you say you had some pizza over the weekend. I yeah. did. Yeah, I did too. Stuffed crust. Uh -huh. mm, way to go. That <laughs> is the way to go. They were trying to get me to take a, an entire pizza home, and I said, no, no. Oh, you're crazy. I don't know what happens with that? I said, bring <laughs> it on. <laughs> 5:49 is your time on your Monday on WKYT this morning. Coming up, you'll get the stories making news at this hour. Also, we'll look at traffic this morning, see what's going on, keep you updated on that situation at EKU there on Lancaster. Avenue and a lot more news on the way this morning. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. 553 is our time on your Monday. Let's take a look at some of the stories we're working on for you at this hour. Our news team is busy right now. Two people charged in connection to a shooting in Lexington will be heading to court this morning. Daniel Glasscock and Destiny Huff are both charged with murder and robbery. Police say the two shot and killed Victor Villa Gomez Duarte outside the Lexington Micro Tail on Buena Vista Road. That's off Winchester Road last week. Police say they found him in the parking lot, and he later died at the hospital. It's going to take weeks to repair. A damaged pedway on the EKU campus is causing a big traffic mess. This morning is the first real test for drivers as a busy road in the middle of Richmond remains closed. A dump truck crashed into the student pedway on EKU's campus, closing down Lancaster Avenue. Officials say the pedway has to be demolished, and they do have to. They do have detour signs up in the area to help out. Probably about the second busiest road there in town, yeah. just uh, behind the bypass. In it's going to be a rough time. Yeah, yeah. it's a, <laughs> just kind of cut the city in two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hillary Clinton is taking a break from campaigning after a doctor announced that she is battling pneumonia. That tops your national headlines this morning. The diagnosis was revealed after cell phone video showed aides propping Clinton up and helping her inside a van as she left the 9-11 anniversary ceremony early in New York yesterday. The medical incident has renewed concerns about the Democratic presidential nominee's health. Memorial services were held in New York, Pennsylvania, and the Pentagon to honor the victims of the September 11th terrorist attacks. In New York, family members read the name and paid tribute to the nearly 3,000 people who died 15 years ago. President Obama said we should never forget the sacrifices of the fallen. A ceasefire goes into effect at sundown in Syria. The deal brokered by the U.S. and Russia would slow the deadly violence and allow much needed humanitarian aid to reach neighborhoods destroyed during the five year old war. If the truce holds for a week, Russia and the U.S. will carry out coordinated airstrikes against ISIS. 
Topping your health headlines this morning, a new study says parents aren't giving their kids their medicine in the right way. All right, a dosing problem. A new study in the journal Pediatrics suggests 85% of parents are making errors when giving liquid medicine to children. Researchers found most errors involved overdosing and that dosing cups are linked to more errors compared to oral syringes. They say using regular kitchen spoons also contributes to mistakes. Nationwide, children's hospitals are reporting a dramatic rise in soccer-related injuries among kids 7 to 17. Researchers found about 300 children are treated every day in the ER. They looked at 25 years' worth of data and found sprains, strains, and fractures were the most common injuries, and that the rate of concussions has also increased significantly. I'm sure a lot of that has to do with soccer is just getting so much more popular. Right. You know. There is a lot of soccer, that's yeah. right, no doubt. Let's get a check out this hour on today's traffic trouble spots with live drive traffic. Here on your Monday morning, here's a look at your drive times into Lexington. You are good to go from just about every location. Uh, we are seeing a 22 minute ride in mm -hmm. from Nicholasville Road uh, this morning, and so we'll check out the reason for that. It speeds down to about uh, 22 miles an hour, so there's evidently some delay on US 27 this morning. And we'll look at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government live drive camera this morning at for sales in Alexandria. Looks like the roads are pretty clear this morning. Not a lot of traffic this as time of the day. We've been, <laughs> right. so we've been mentioning, of course, uh, the, the issues over in Richmond there on the yes. uh, Lancaster Avenue uh, with a closure due to that uh, pedway problem. All right, let's check weather as we head into 6 o'clock. Yeah, boy, things feel really nice this morning. They're actually slightly cool out there. We're going to see another good day in store. I'll show you a nice forecast coming up with another hour of WKY. IT NEWS IN JUST A COUPLE OF MINUTES. What's wrong?